Hi, this is Tom from ZeroToFinals.com. In this video I'm going to be going through prosthetic heart valves. You can find written notes on this topic at ZeroToFinals.com forward slash prosthetic valves or in the cardiology section of the Zero to Finals Medicine book. So let's jump straight in. Prosthetic heart valves are basically any valve that's been implanted into a patient to replace their original own valve. And patients that have had a valve replacement will have a scar. Usually this is a midline stenotomy scar, which runs straight down the middle of the sternum. And if you see a patient with this scar, it might indicate either a mitral or aortic valve replacement, but patients who have had a coronary artery bypass graft will also have a similar scar. Less commonly, you can use a lateral thoracotomy scar, which is between the ribs on the left-hand side, and this is used for mitral valve replacement surgery. We need to make a clear distinction between bioprosthetic and mechanical heart valves. So valves can either be replaced by a bioprosthetic valve, which usually comes from a pig, which is known as a porcine valve, or mechanical heart valves, which are made of metal. Bioprosthetic heart valves have a limited lifespan of about 10 years, but they don't require any anticoagulation, so they're quite well suited for patients that are a bit older. Mechanical heart valves have a really good lifespan of well over 20 years, but because they're metallic and there's a risk of clotting, they need lifelong anticoagulation with warfarin. The target INR range for mechanical heart valves is 2.5 to 3.5. Let's go through a few types of mechanical heart valves. There's a valve called a Star Edwards valve. And this is a ball in a cage. And as the ball moves through the cage, it lets blood through, and then it presses against the cage, and blood can't flow back. And it was very successful, but they're not being used anymore, because they had a very high risk of forming blood clots. Another type of valve is called a tilting disc valve, and this is a single disc that tilts. And as it tilts, it lets blood flow one way, and then when it tilts back, it closes up, and blood can't flow through it. And the final mechanic valve type is called a St. Jude's valve, which is also known as a bi-leaflet valve. And this is where you have two tilting metallic discs. And these discs tilt to let blood flow through, and then they close up together to prevent blood flowing back the other direction. And these are effective and have the least risk of a thrombus out of the metallic heart valves. What are the complications of metallic heart valves? Well, we've already mentioned the thrombus forming, and this is where blood stagnates and forms a clot and has a high risk of becoming an embolus and leading off into the brain and becoming a stroke. Another complication of heart valve replacement is infective endocarditis, and this is where an infection develops in the prosthetic valve, and it has quite a high mortality rate. We'll talk a bit about that later. And the final complication of mechanical heart valves is something called hemolysis. And this is where blood gets churned up in the valve and it breaks down the red blood cells and leads to an anemia or a low hemoglobin count. Another feature of mechanical heart valves is that you'll hear a click and you might be asked to examine somebody with a me mechanical heart valve in your OSCE to identify what type of valve they have. So a click will replace the first heart sound for a metallic mitral valve. So let's hear an example of that. And a click will replace the second heart sound for a metallic aortic valve. And let's hear an example of that. Let's talk about a procedure called a transcatheter aortic valve implantation procedure, or a TAVI procedure. This is a treatment for severe aortic stenosis, usually in patients that are too high risk to have a proper open valve replacement operation. It involves a local or a general anaesthetic, and a catheter is inserted into the femoral artery, and a wire is fed through under x-ray guidance through the arterial system all the way to the location of the aortic valve. 
When they arrive at the aortic valve, they inflate a balloon to stretch out that stenose valve, and then they can implant a bioprosthetic valve into the location of the aortic valve. So they essentially stretch out the person's aortic stenosis and then put a bioprosthetic valve in place. It's very effective, but we don't know what the long-term outcomes for a TAVI are because it's a relatively new procedure. For that reason, in younger, fitter patients, we still use open surgery as the first-line option. Patients who have a TAVI also don't typically require warfarin as the valve is bioprosthetic. Finally, let's talk about infective endocarditis. Infective endocarditis occurs in about 2.5% of patients who have a surgical valve replacement and about 1.5% of patients who have a TAVI. If you get infective endocarditis in a prosthetic valve, it has quite a high mortality rate of around 15%, and it's usually caused by one of three gram-positive cocci organisms, could be Staphylococcus, Streptococcus, or Enterococcus. And something worth noting is that patients with prosthetic valves used to be advised to take antibiotics for routine dental procedures to protect against infective endocarditis, but this is no longer the case. So thanks for watching, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, don't forget there's plenty of other resources on the Zero to Finals website, including loads and loads of notes on various different topics that you might cover in medical school, with specially made illustrations. There's also a whole test section where you can find loads of questions to test your knowledge and see where you're up to in preparation for your exams. There's also a blog where I share a lot of my ideas about a career in medicine and tips on how to have success as a doctor. And if you want to help me out on YouTube, you can always leave me a thumbs up, give me a comment or even subscribe to the channel so that you can find out when the next videos are coming out. So I'll see you again soon.